Okay, so this is going to be a quick guide on how to work with um, Cinema 4D, and this is R25 specifically, but I'm sure it works on a few earlier versions, uh, with their, their take system. So the reason I want to use the take system is I want to use animation um, and be able to have multiple animation tracks in the same output, so same FBX, or in this case, GLTB that I'm trying to get to, or GLTF file. Um, not the easiest thing to get your head around, a uh, few little issues, but I will show you as quickly as possible how I did it. So let's take a cube. I want to keep it as simple as possible, but obviously this will work with anything you can animate. So from here, we've got a single cube. Um, I'm going to go to takes. Uh, we don't want to do anything on main, so we're going to add a new take. Uh, we're going to call this take one, and we're going to add another one, and we're going to call this take two. And obviously you can call these whatever you want. That's no problems at all. So in terms of the take system, you select which take system to use based on the left. Um, so within here, if I'm in a take and I want to do something with this object, you can see I have it selected. Uh, what stumped me for a long time is if I try and keyframe this object, it does nothing. Clicking that box does absolutely nothing. Uh, I can't create any keyframes, I can't generate any keyframes, auto keyframing on or off makes no difference. Um, basically this is not aware of which objects it needs to override and which objects it's allowed to modify. So in order to fix that, you basically need to drag your object into the take system. So if I put that in here, I now have my object. If I do the same for take two, we basically now have uh, two takes, uh, which has um, is allowed to modify this object. So now when I have this selected, if I want to hit keyframe, hey presto, I get a keyframe. So if I want to maybe keyframe this to do something, uh, let's say every... Um, 15 frames let's just have this move up and we will keep frame that there uh, and while I'm here I'll also show you another quick trick which I learned off of um, Jonas for um, on university uh, which is how to kind of animate this as a loop so within here if I'm going to jump quickly to the um, the F curve because I think it's easier to see which is um, so you can see here oh, let me make this a bit bigger you can see here we have our F curve let me move that up I probably will a little bit smaller. Yep, there we go. So if I click now on my F curve, um, uh, actually let's click on that position. What we want to say is at the end of this curve, what do you want to do? So after, so at the end of it, we're going to loop and we're going to loop and return um, back to where it started. But we're going to do that one frame before the loop position. So in this case, it's going to be 15. So it's going to be 29, which will return us back to where we started on the 30th frame. And you can see how that goes round around circles. And if I drop that down to say maybe 30, uh, you get an idea about this uh, take just has a looping F curve. Uh, and if I show you that, you can see how that modifies that nicely. Uh, okay, so that is our first take, our first animation. If I switch now to the second take, you can see we have no animation, which is really nice. We have a clean track. So from here, maybe we want to do something different with this one. So maybe we want to spin it. So let's start by keyframing it. And you can see because we added the object in here, it's allowed to modify it. Uh, and then this time, let's go to uh, let's go to frame 30. Um, and instead, maybe we want to do something like rotate it. So if I hold down shift, let's just rotate this to maybe like 180. Let's do that and keyframe that. Same as before, let's go to the dope sheet um, and look for where... That's interesting. Why is that not showing that? Did that not actually keyframe it as I expected it to? Let's try. No, it is still spinning. Okay, odd. There it is. Don't know why I had to select it in order for that to work. And it's down on the rotation somewhere. But let's just hit that anyway so we can see. So uh, with this green one selected, uh, I'm going to do the same as before. So let's select the cube and say after the animation. Uh, oh, there you go. That's nice. It's automatically dropped to 60. I wonder if I can change that. Maybe make that 90 instead. So we've got 30. So we're going to go 59. Um, and we obviously want to make that multiples of 60. So let's put that as 120. I'm just curious to see if I can do different length animations for each. And you see this one's now spinning. And this takes now going up and down. That's interesting. So you can't have different length loops. It looks like they're both going to retain the same. Interesting. Okay, so what I would usually do at this point, so we can close our 
type sheet is I would export this and ideally I want to get to GLTF or GLTB. Uh, annoyingly, exporting to GLTB, although it has transforms and bake animation, it ignores the take system. And what it basically does is only bakes in the take you have selected. So I could export that, but I'd only get take two right now because that's the one that's highlighted. So instead, what we need to do is we need to export to FBX and FBX has awareness of the take manager. So you can say export multiple takes from the take manager. Um, the tracks are in there. We don't need to bake them. It's just keeping the tracks, which is obviously our um, rotation and position. Uh, and then from there, if I export that, you can see I've already got a few of these here from my first experiments. Let's call this part two. Okay, so we now have an FBX, uh, this one here, an FBX, which has our two animation takes in it. Um, and what we need to do is convert it. So there's a couple of ways I want to try and convert this. First one is using um, Facebook's uh, FBX to GLTF. Um, and when I try to um, export this, so let me take our new file. Uh, and I'm going to export that one, version 2. Uh, let's go to the original just so you can see how that works. So if I try and export using the command you can see on screen, which is that. Um, and I run this. Oh, missing my pause. Let's try that again. Just so you can see what the log is. Okay, so you can see it picks up the fact there's three animations. But annoyingly, it's reporting zero channels. So it's skipping it. So take one, take two, it can see. But it's not going to import it to my GOTF now. Um, maybe on some other animations this might work, but for me on this simple animation this is skipping, which means you end up with um, an animation. I will show you how the animation looks, because let's take our converted uh, animation and we're going to stick it into... Let's just refresh that so you can prove it works. So I'm using uh, this excellent online um, viewer, um, and basically you can see here we just have a cube, um, which has no animation on it at all. Animations would appear up here. So refresh that. So the way I'm going to fix that is unfortunately I'm going to have to use Blender. I'm trying to avoid it because I'm a Cinema 4D user, but in this case I need Blender's um, multi-take system uh, for GLTFs. So we're going to go into here and I'm going to look for my part two. So what we want to do is import this model. So to do that, uh, it's, forgive me, I don't really know my way around Blender very well, but this is a brand new Blender project. We're going to import an FBX. Is it going to be clever enough? No. So let's go find my workspace. Um, Cinema 4D. Okay, so here we go. So this is now exported and interestingly, it only picks the first take. So in here I found set actions and you can pick which take to run, but it doesn't show both. Um, and also I've noticed in the timeline, although you get this kind of summary view, um, you only basically get the one take you've got selected. So that's no good. So what we need to do here is if we go to this non-linear animation, um, you can see we basically have the one that's selected right now, and I can add in a new action strip. And I can select the second take, uh, and we can name this one now, take two, take one. Okay, so this way we have our two different takes. Um, and then from Blender, I can this time do an export to GLTF. And let's go and stick that back where we need. So Cinema 4D. Okay, so we're going to call this... Oh, Let's do this one as we've already done this. Uh, part two. Okay, so in terms of animation settings, I've just got animation turned on. I haven't messed with any other animation settings. It's just important it's the GLTB. Great, so that's now exported. So we should find in here we have a part two. Interesting, that's a bit bigger than the last one. Um, so part two, GLB. In fact, if I open this into um, 3D viewer, it's very hit and miss. The 3D viewer sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. We can see it's showing one of the animations. We also have the second animation. Real quick way of actually tweaking these. So you can see they're both baked in. But most importantly, I'm going to use uh, the viewer and stick that into the GOT viewer, viewer. And this time, you can see we now have two animations. And interestingly, it will actually blend both, which is really quite nice. So we have, a, uh, we have our up and down. 
we have our rotation, or we have a combination of both of them, which is exactly what I needed to get to. So long way you're getting there, but it works. Uh, one thing to be aware of, and this is what I'm playing with with this model, is um, when it comes to importing uh, all the bits and pieces here, if you just drag this in, it's not picking up the children. Uh, so it's important to basically select um, all children. So let me see if I can do this. Um, select children. There we go. Now, when I drag that into the take system, and I do that into there, uh, this time it's going to take a while. I now have all the information I need on this one, and the same for this. And that will allow me correctly to uh, do exactly the animations you've just seen on the others, but this time with the character, which is exactly what I want to be doing. Same scenario, working with the take system in here. That's basically it.